Hello and welcome to my first installment of my history video. Um, blah, 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 blah. I was going to say it quicker than that, but I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> right. A couple of things I want to go through first. I'm going to go through them quickly in the first minute. I'll try and get them done in the first minute. Uh, a couple of things I'll moisturize my dreads with. I don't do it at the moment because I'm actually um, going through a neglect method. The only thing I moisturize now is my scalp. And I wash my dreads normally every week, every couple of days, every three, four days more or less. Um, basically, the first couple of products I use, um, these are the only two I'm going to show you today. And I'll probably go through a proper, proper, proper product um, announcement that I use. Product announcement or product evaluation or recommendations. I'll do a video on that later on. Um, Let's Dread Lock Maintenance Oil. Okay, and I don't know where you can get that from. I got it from a shop. You can probably get it online, probably eBay. I'll probably do it. Um, I think Amazon do it. It's a 12, 12 mil bottle. Um, it's a really good oil. What you do is you just put a couple of drops in your hand, probably. I'll show you. Hang on. Right. One, two, three. Three drops. All right, literally just three drops in a row. Oil, hands, and it will be slightly um, glistening, slightly like shiny on your feet, hands. And basically, all you do, I'm not doing this every day because I'm actually neglecting my dreads. You grab them and you roll just a couple of times quite hard into your dread and then that's it that'll do about four or five dreads so don't soak your hands and then obviously cut the more drops and then do another four or five dreads as for your dreads itself don't use it on your scalp because it'll make your scalp really greasy this is for your scalp this is better locked daily moisturizer all right and i use this on my scalp probably once a month um, just to make sure that my hair is nice and healthily moisturized <laughs> um, yeah what it comes unscented basically it looks like a um, mayonnaise but it's more like Nivea it smells like Nivea cream to start with and it comes like a like, like strange wet mayonnaise type texture and basically you just use a little dab on your fingers and you rub it into your scalp like so you get it all in there you moisturize your scalp nice and yeah get it in your scalp and it'll Moisturize quite well. It'll last about probably. It'll last during your wash as well. It's quite good for your wash. It'll protect your scalp for if you've got a harsh shampoo that you use and you don't. You're not sure. Not sure what it'll react like, but it, it does hold up quite well against the shampoo, and it'll keep your dreads moisturized even after they're dry when you wash them. Um, this is from KeystoneLabs.com. www.keystonelabs.com. Better Locks Daily Moisturizer. I'd recommend putting a couple of drops of tea tree essential oil in there. And shaking it up really well because um, you don't want you want it to be diluted. You don't want raw tea tree on your scalp. Also, I use mango oil in it, and I use some lavender oil, which is great for your scalp and your dreads itself as well. It makes them smell lovely as well. There's two things I just wanted to go through before I do my uh, quick history video on here. Quick. Now back to the history. Um, obviously the first video. I'm just going to see how it goes, and if you don't like it, then I won't. Do another one i don't carry on doing them because i'm going to do about five and if the five go well i'll carry on doing them again but if it doesn't go well let me know and you're not if you're not interested in seeing any more of this then let me know all right um also i'm not sure how to teach this i'm not sure how to teach what voice my opinions on it. i'm not sure how to voice my research over the internet or over a camera because i've never done this kind of interaction before with people and so or with myself to be honest um basically got a load of notes and this is like this is like six pages of a book that I wrote um, completely out of my own research and my own um, thoughts on dreadlocks. Give me a sec and I'll be back in one second. My camera's blinking. Two seconds. I'll be back. Stay there. Don't move. Did you move? Did you move? I hope not. I told you'd be back. Um, yeah, so what I was saying, um, I don't know how to do this properly, so I'm just going to read out what I've done and research I've done, so I'm just going to show you all tell you what I found out and a few things that I, I thought about dreadlocks anyway. Um, first of all we're going to do with the origination of dreadlocks. Basically we can't find out the proper origination of dreadlocks because it's such a vast thing to delve into. I mean trying to find out where dreads come from is quite difficult because you don't know the times that people lived back like three four hundred years ago and it's there's no way of telling where they come from really. I mean thousands of years ago there's no way. You know it's difficult to pinpoint so from the research I found anyway, from what I've researched, there's no way to pinpoint it. Many theories, many mythical theories, and many many legends of dreadlock related people, I suppose, like gods and goddesses and stuff who have had dreadlocks. Um, 
it can go back to like Egypt, the, the ancient Egyptians and stuff, and it goes back to like Indian uh, sort of gods and goddesses like Shiva and stuff. Um, a lot of Indians worshipped uh, Shiva, obviously one of the goddesses and one, one of the gods and stuff that are certain gods and goddesses of Indian cultures and certain religions have been portrayed as having locked hair or snake type hair. And I suppose the followers themselves had the same sort of hairstyle because they wanted to join in and they thought it was sort of a, like a link between them and the god and goddess of their time or whatever their religion was. Or religion is, if you're still, if you're, if you're watching it, I'm, you know, if you're still in your religious paths, then you'll obviously be very into what that god or goddess lives and how they protect you and how they feel and what they do to the universe and what they do to you so you would follow in a certain way you know so i'm assuming a lot of the followers of shiva and probably a lot of ganesh followers would have like dreadlocks and proper like even beards and stuff you know when they have beards and overgrown beards and tashes and things that reasons for it another reason behind it so religion is a big point um the ancient egyptians obviously with the sarcophaguses and stuff and you know all the all the all the golden mem like memorial stuff on the, the heads and stuff and the, the top of the caskets and things have all been goldenized you know with loads of dreads and stuff and i don't know if they call them dreads um they call them snake hair um obviously i just mentioned that earlier um, locked hair i'm not sure if they call it locked hair but they i read somewhere it was um reptile like skin i'm not sure where i read that it was reptile roughness Someone wrote reptile rough, it's a reptile associated because it was so rough and it was so tough, you know, and so hard and tough. And I suppose that was tough to be back on one the There's also carvings that we go back to like the 17th century, like 16th century, back to the cave, and even there's carvings of you know, people with dreadlocks fighting lions and tigers and stuff, and saber toothed tigers and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, if you go back then, you can see that there's so much. Dreadlock related stuff going on there. It's incredible. I think it's amazing to find that back then even these were normal. They happened because no one had a comb, no one had a brush, no one had anything. So they just happened. And when, when you put your brush and comb down, that's what happens. You get dreadlocks. And I suppose that's a lot of neglect methods out here on YouTube and even in the real world of normal dreadies that have people neglect all the way. Some do it the wrong way, some don't wash the hair completely and they just let it mat out with dirt and grease, which is no good for them at all. So obviously the more you wash them, the better they're going to be. Friction. It's all good. If you've got greasy hair, not going to matter. If you wash it, it's going to have friction to cause the rubbing and the build-up of the, the knots, you know? Um, yeah, even back then, you know, we can look at that and see we can look back that far and see so many dreadies out there. That was where it began, more or less. But before that, we still don't know, so we can't really pinpoint it down. Um, like today, I mean, if we if we go back to Egypt, like again, um, if we go back to Jesus, um, in, the, in the book that I bought, I bought a dreadlock book a little while ago, and it's just called Dreads. So it's just called Dreads. Um, it's a good book if you want it. If you know, it's um, Francesco Mastiglia, Mastalia. And Alfenso Pagano, Pagano, Pagano. Um, it's a very good book. Very good book. I recommend reading it. There's a couple of writers in there who say that um, Jesus had dreadlocks, and it's quite a mythical thing to have uh, Jesus with dreads. It's quite good. It's a good theory. Um, in I mean, if you look back into Jesus' times, I mean, apparently the followers of Jesus had the same type of hair as Jesus because they said that his hair was sacred, and he was sacred. So everything about him was sacred. So they join in. In the same thing and follow in the same footsteps, if you like. Um, I play some music. Yeah, so we, you can look back as far as you want. I mean, if you wanted to do some research yourself, then you'd find some awesome stuff, like I have, and I found some quite cool stuff. And I'm going to go into that next video. Not just the origination of dreadlocks, but more in depth than what I would have thought would have uh, caught my eye. Um, like recent communities in Europe and the Celts and stuff and Vikings and things like that, they, they were portrayed as dreadlocks as well. Uh, knotted hair, knotted empresses and knotted emperors. Emperors, sorry. They were cast as knotted emperors. And there's a 
Knotted Empress. She has a website called, she's called herself the Knotted Empress. And I'm, I'm assuming that's because the Knotted Empress was ever since we had dreadlocks back then. And she's got an I think that's probably why she done it. Why she's got an Um. Obviously, African, you know, South African styles of hair. Um, Mali, Bob Mali is a very big, big name in dreadlocks, so everyone knows about that. Um, go back to his family and stuff, and all his family have lovely locks. You ask them how long they've had their locks, and their grandparents and their parents have locks, and their kids have locks, and it's like it's a tradition, and it's like carries on for the entire generations. It skips generation to generation. Um. That's basically all I wanted to go through. I mean, I can't. I can't. I've got loads of stuff about where dreadlocks originate from. But like I said, I'm not very good at voicing this kind of thing over. So if you're interested in letting me know how to do this properly, please feel free and I will give it a go. Um, yeah, so even. Like, I'm trying to think of different ways to. Alright, oh, okay, there's. Okay, if we go to. Like pagan times, we go back to pagan and Celtic, uh, Celtic times, then. We find that um, the Naga people, and like the people of. Um, there's, there's loads, there's loads of different cultures and things that uh, do, you can find. That, right, Naja people are the Naga people. Alright, these are part of the Viking kind of communities, you know, they're all. Um, if we go back to communities, uh, not the communities, but the times of when the Vikings were around and the Naja people or the Naga people are ever gone. Um, they look like dreaded community monstrosities, apparently. Um, one, one writer said in his book that um, they were a monstrosity amongst men because they had hair like this. And I thought it was, I read that and I was like, it's quite disheartening because it's like, well, no, they you know, they aren't people who are against anyone, they're not having, they're not having needs to be mean or vicious or nasty to anyone in the community, they're just there because they love the way their hair is and they don't, it's natural, you know, it's a natural thing to have and if they want to have that kind of hairstyle then it's entirely like them. In case in point, there's a guy on my Facebook who has got shaved, he's just shaved his hair and he was preparing it for dreadlocks for like two months, well a month, probably. And he cut it off because he was getting peer pressure. And he said, "Why get dreadlocks? You look better with a Mohican." And he was a proper, he's a proper rocker. So he said, "You know, if I I'll cut my hair off, you're all annoying me." And that's just exactly what he was talking about. This, this writer, he was with peer pressure. So he thought that everyone had dreadlocks because one person had dreadlocks, and then that community had dreadlocks, and then he forced it upon these people who didn't and who were against it, and they kind of took advantage of their weak will. You know, they were very weak will people and they were easy to manipulate, I suppose. And that's what he writes about a lot. Um, if we go to monasteries, monks and stuff, even monks, um, there's a lot of monk um, individuals and Buddhas as well. If you've got the Buddha, um, Buddhist societies and Buddhist culture and things, we can look at loads of Buddhas who have got uh, not dreadlocks especially, but long hair that's matted. It's not dreaded, just matted together, like one big thick man. I suppose it's one big dreadlock, but it's still a Congo. A big Congo. Um, monks, there's a couple of monks um, who have a ponytail, but it's like four dreads locked together, like a Congo. It's both like Congos, you have numerous Congos just locked up, big ponytail, and it's beautiful. Completely bald, you just got this one big thick ponytail at the end of the head. Awesome. You want to have a look. This, even then, see, we go back to monks, and they look at the, if you look at monks' history, it's incredible because monks have dreads and you think well monks have been around for years and years and years the monastery's been around for years you know and you can see that their history have obviously been influenced their dreadlocks have been influenced by the history where they lived you know because there's no way they'd have them for any reason whatsoever um you could get ridiculed if you're a monk i suppose um if you're part of a convent or a monastery or something that you may get ridiculed for what your hair looks like so there must be a lot of history back there in there so i'm going to go through that later on more in depth of what they look than what I found out. Like I said, not good at this. Sorry, I apologise. I'm rambling on. If you're not interested, to go somewhere else. You'll probably find a lot more dready videos important than this. Um. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm going to go into now. There's, you know, I'll go into tribes and stuff and tribal art and things, and where I found loads of um, stone sculptures and stuff from. I'll, I'll link some websites to my a YouTube video on my website. I'll post this to my website soon as well. And. Yeah, so I'm sorry for the, 
like poor muddled kind of quality of the video. Um, I'm not very good at this kind of thing at all. So I hope it helps, I hope it works, and I hope um, some of this got by. If it's not informative, please let me know. And let me know if you got any tips on filming this because I'm not very good at filming myself talking about a subject specifically, you know, I mean, I've talked about dreads all day, but when I've done research, I don't know how to voice it over to someone. I've done loads of speeches in school and college and stuff, but I don't know how to do it to a camera for you all, so I don't know what you're all like. Um, so yeah, let me know if any of this was helpful. Um, I'll probably carry on doing some more videos, I'll do the next one next week here. And I'm sorry it's late, and it's probably not what you expected, it's not as good as you expected. Um, but yeah, I've got more information, I'll probably get it sorted out. You know, nerves play a part in this, and I'm a very nervous and anxious person, so please, be kind. Um, if you like it, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs down. Comment if you have any, like, information you want to feed me and tell me how to do this properly. If you have any informative kind of views and points that you'd like me to voice my opinion on. So, if you have any questions about where I think dreads come from and what personally led me to have dreadlocks then please feel free I heard that she goes feel free to comment and also my Dreadshoe 24 7 videos are coming I believe my viewers and my fellow colleagues my fellow dread colleagues are actually uploading videos as I speak this week next week probably on the week after Hope. Uh, my website is up and running in a week. I have nearly finished my website and I've, I've given them the information how to log in and edit their things. Yeah, so next video is up next week for this. Uh, my 20th update is not coming. I said this in my last video. I'm actually going to do my 24th update, a 24 month update for you all. I'm just going to leave for the next four months and that's it. And then I'll do the 24 because that'll be a milestone for me. I'm not doing my monthly updates. There's not much is going to change unless something dramatic changes my dreads and I'll let you all know. In the meantime, just bear with me. These are my, these are going to be my most focused videos out of the industry and also some tutorial videos on bleach and dyeing and probably tightening locks and all that good stuff. Um, loads of stuff I can do with my dreads. Loads of stuff I can feed out information on. So I'll have loads of videos coming very, very soon. Um, I'll have a full maintenance and washing session, washing session out soon as well, so I'll do that probably in a week or two. Um, it'll just be me washing my dreads and how I dry them and how I go through the process of doing things that way. Yeah, so I um, hope you all like the music if you can hear it. My favourite music ever. Playing, playing for change and it's PFC. You can see it on um, Spotify. There is basically a band who, um, it's not a band, it's like an album where they've done all over the world, filming and music together. It's like a big collaboration of hundreds of people live streaming. Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, have a great weekend. It's Saturday now, so I'll see you all Monday, I believe. I'll film my next video Monday evening, and that'll be my last one for a week. Have a great day, guys. I'm sorry for the lack of information in the video. I'll up my next one next week. Dress, I'll leave you with some dreads. Oh my god! Bye bye, Pete.